I just want to give you a word that's on my heart. I'm going to be talking today about spiritual surrender. Spiritual surrender. Spiritual surrender. Now, I want you to go ahead and look at your neighbor really quick. And I want you to ask him this question. Listen to me. I think we say very loosely that God's got all of me. But I want you to look at your neighbor. I know they may be six feet apart, but that's all right. I'm even glad that we serve a God of no distance. He's with you right now in your heart, in your spirit. He's not sitting beside you. Watch. He's in you. Y'all, y'all realize what I'm t- talking about this morning, right? So we've got to quit using the excuse that um, I-, I-, I can do what I want to do. Spiritual surrender. Spiritual surrender. Now I want you to look at your neighbor and I want you to ask them these words. How much does God have of you? Come on, talk to him. Talk to him. If that neighbor ain't talking, talk to the one beside you. Somebody else, all right? How much does God have of you? Now, y'all ready? I wouldn't be much of a pastor if I asked the question and didn't give you a chance to respond. Now, I want you to look back at them. And I want you to tell them how much God has of you. Allison, that changes the ball game. How much does God have of you? Does God just got your Sundays and <laughs> Mondays you go back to your routine? Does God got 75%? Because most people say, man, listen, 75% is a good deal. Not when it comes to God. Because watch this. What if you just go 75% to heaven? I'm telling you today as a church, I want you all to listen to me. I want you to lean in and I want you to listen. You've got as much of Jesus Christ as you want. You've got as much of Jesus Christ as you want. Does God got 50% of you? Does God got 10% of you? How much does God have of you? Here's the answer. Y'all ready? What if I told you the answer? It all depends upon your surrender. Your surrender. Your surrender. I'm going to make a statement that's going to go totally against Southern Baptist. Totally against Pentecostal. But this is a Bible statement, what I'm getting ready to tell you. Y'all ready? Somebody say amen. Somebody say I'm ready. Because what I'm getting ready to say will change the ball game. And this changes everything. This changed, what I'm getting ready to tell you, changed everything in my life. And it still does today. Y'all ready? Here it is. When you got saved and you got born again, you've got all of God. You've got all of God. You've got God. You've got Jesus. You've got the Holy Spirit. But watch this. He didn't get all of you. Come on. You got all of God. But God didn't get all of you. God didn't get all of you. Watch this. He's still working on me. He's still working on me. You, we got all of God. Yes, you got God. You got the Holy Spirit. You got Jesus. But He did not get all of you. It's called the big word sanctification. It's a process. It's a process. So watch this. What is spiritual surrender? What what does it mean when you say, man, I am spiritually surrendered to God? Here's what that means. I love this. It means you give up all power. I'm going to let that soak in your fleshly mind real quick. You say, I say, I am spiritually surrendered to God. That means this. I give up all my power. It also means that I completely release my will. Watch over to His will. And Allison, this is crazy. That's why Jesus said, I know what I want. I know what I want. But not my will be done. But Father God, your will be done. That is spiritual surrender right there. When you can honestly God say, God, I know what my flesh wants. I know what I'm desiring. I know what I think I need. But God, it's not about me. It's all about you, God. It's not about my, about my will. Your will be done in my life here on earth as it is in heaven. That's powerful stuff right there. It's also, listen to this. 
Here's where people get really nervous. It's about yielding over to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It's about when you say, I am spiritually surrendered, it's you saying, God, not only do I want your will, but God, I yield to your spirit. I yield to your spirit. And what does that mean? It means your spirit led, your spirit fed, you're walking in the spirit, the fruit of the spirit is coming through your life. So I'm gonna ask you a question this morning, even before I get down into this. Does this describe you? Are you spiritually surrendered? Have you said, God, not my will, but your will? So as I was preparing, as I was preparing for this sermon, I thought about something kind of crazy. And I thought about some man, I don't know if I need to put this on the big screen or not, this in the book, but I am. So I thought about a UFC fighter. I watch UFC. I know that went the Holy Ghost. I know y'all are good. I just like it. I like when people beat each other up in the name of Jesus. I'm joking. I'm, t- I'm joking. I'm joking. By the way, I missed you guys. Thank y'all for allowing me to take two weeks to hear from the Lord, to come back to my senses. And uh, sometimes you've got to get away to look in. And they call that healthy leadership, by the way. And so, thank y'all. I love you. I missed you. I, I miss getting up on this stage and worshiping with y'all. So anyway, let me rewind. I started thinking about a UFC fighter. A UFC fighter. When a UFC fighter gets to the point of quitting, listen to this. I always looked at this wrong. They tap out. They tap out. But how many of you know that's a valuable lesson to be learned? That is a valuable lesson to be learned. When they get to the point of quitting, before, listen, before they quit, (laughs) before they get choked out, they surrender. I'm going to say it again. Y'all just went over your head. Before they quit, before they get choked out, they surrender. Did y'all hear me? I'm going to say it again because I want this to get in your spirit. Because a lot of you are to the point, if you'll be honest, if you'll be honest, listen, y'all can lie at church all you want to. Everybody under my voice gets to a point in your life where you want to tap out, you want to quit, you feel like the enemy's choking you out. Here's all I'm asking you to do. You ready, Destiny? Let's not quit. Let's just say, God, I'm tapping out. I'm surrendering to your will. Your will be done in my life here on earth as it is in heaven. That's wisdom. Wisdom. So before you quit, why don't you just tap out and surrender? See, a lot of people look at surrender as weakness. They do. They say, well, that fighter's stronger than that fighter. No, what if I told you the one that tapped out is a pretty smart man? Pretty smart man. Because if I'm getting choked out, and I've got an opportunity to say, hey, stop, 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 please, Jesus Christ's name, stop, stop. When you surrender, watch. We're going to look at this different today. When you surrender, and everybody else thinks you're quitting. Everybody else thinks you're a loser. Everybody else thinks, man, something is not right. What if I told you when they tap out, it's a different way to look at things. It's not that they quit. It's not that they give up. It's just that they surrendered. Listen to this, so good. I mean, y'all feel the Holy Ghost. Now, come on, I want you to raise, if you feel the Holy Ghost, if you feel the Spirit of God, I want you to raise your hands. That's about half of us, and that's about right. That's why it takes forever to break through the Spirit. Because whatever Spirit that you had out there and you packed in here, it takes a while to break through it. But the Word of God, the Bible says, is like a hammer. I'm not talking about Daryl Isaac either. He may be the heavy hitter, but my God owns a sledgehammer. Come on, somebody. My God will break the hard heart. My God will break the hard heart in your life. He'll set you free. And that's my prayer for us. This may be our last worship service. How'd you do? See, surrender is not weakness, it's meekness. That's when you realize, watch, you're not in control of your life. Come on, somebody. You're not. 
get control of your life. You finally realize that you're not a bag of chips. And the ranch dip that goes with it. You finally realize the more you surrender, the stronger you become. Let me give y'all another, can I give y'all one more example before I break this down? Did I tell y'all I miss y'all? Yeah, listen, y'all let me go in two weeks so y'all get today. Y'all get today. When I fly in an airplane, I thought about this. I sit down in the seat and I have to surrender. Now listen, if it's left up to be Ralph, I'd walk on air. But when you go sit down on an airplane, y'all come on, help me. I'm preaching better than y'all acting. It's all right though. When I get on an airplane, and they say, sir, this is your seat. And when I sit down in that seat and I buckle myself in, at that moment, I got to trust the airplane and the driver of the plane, the pilot. And I'm not going to lie to y'all. Sometimes I trust them. Turbulence is scary. But what if I told you, when you think about surrender, it's like you, what, hallelujah. It's like you sitting on a heavenly airplane. God says, that's your seat, Jimmy. I feel the Holy Ghost. And you buckle yourself in. Watch, when you buckle yourself in, what you're saying to that pilot, I understand that, hey, listen, I'm not driving this plane. (laughs) There's going to be some turbulence up there. It's going to drop maybe five to ten feet, and I'm going to be scared to death. When we adopted Destiny, listen, y'all, 21 hours on a plane, I was not a good passenger up Travis I was up I was walking I was talking to people and and all of a sudden I was sitting down we hit turbulence I squealed like a girl I did I squealed ah! I squealed like a girl and Dana just looked at me she said you all right I said no not really but I'm learning in my journey called life it's true surrender is like getting on an airplane buckling yourself in that no matter what comes your way, though I walk through the valley, I'll fear no evil. For your rod and your staff, they comfort me and they follow me all the days of my life. That surely goodness and mercy is with me. That no matter what mountain, no matter what valley, no matter what I'm going through in life, I buckled in and I trust the pilot to drive me, hallelujah, all the way to heaven. Come on, somebody. That's what surrender is. And listen, I'm not a good student. I'm not, I'm not really a good student. I'm trying. Now, I want y'all to think about when you say, I am surrendered, what you're saying, God, I'm in. No matter what happens out there, I'm in. And God, when the turbulence in life hits you, <laughs> you got to take the heat. But watch this. I'm, here's what I'm telling you. Here's what surrender. God, wherever you want to take me, whatever you want to do, here I am. Here I am. Here I am, God. You watch. You are the driver of my life. Do y'all listen to me? If you're born again, if you're saved, if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and say, watch this, you don't belong to you. You belong to the biggest and the highest name in mankind that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Jesus all by himself. But watch this, you've got to trust the driver of your life. And I'm learning. Thank y'all for allowing me to grow. I think a lot of times people think that pastors own a phone booth and they got a cape attached to their back. And I think a lot of people think that leadership is just, man, we we got a phone booth. We're human. We're going to make thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of mistakes. But I'm here today to tell you what we all need to watch. From over here. Yep, I'm pointing at you. Mama told me not to, but I am. All of us need to surrender. Every person under my voice needs to surrender when the police come at you and say raise your hands you raise your hands you know what that tells them I don't have nothing in my hands <laughs> I, I don't, I'm not going to reach in my pocket keep your hands where I can see them you know why they say that because we as humans always want to reach for something I'm preaching good we all 
always want to reach for somebody besides the greatest name. So I'm just telling you, Elkhorn, keep your hands up. It's time to get on a spiritual plane. It's time to buckle yourself in. Oh, there's going to be turbulence. Oh, there's going to be storms. But I tell you, I know the owner of the plane. I know the, I know the pilot of the plane. And I promise you, if you stay in your seat, he'll get you to heaven every time. Somebody give God praise. Come on. Come on, hallelujah. Let God be the driver of your life. Don't, don't let this stinking CNN and ABC, Fox News, t- turn it off. Get in the Word of God. Watch this. Listen to me. This is not in my notes, but y'all get this for free. Why does it shock us the way the world is acting? Why does it shock us that they're after the churches? Why does it? Yeah, they're lost. They are lost. They do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Here's the sad part. Y'all ready? you got people that have been attending church all their life acting like the world. You know what I call that, Mark Kessinger? Lost. You can be a member. Woo! You can sign a baptism certificate. You can hang it on your wall. What's hanging on your heart? I wish I could. I'm going to get Terry teach me. I'm coming, I'm going to blow it one day. Y'all going to be so shocked too. Church membership will get you nowhere. And I know it's Sunday morning. I feel like I'm preaching to the choir. But somebody needs this word. So let me ask something. Real quick, I promise you I'm not going to keep you long. Matthew chapter, 20, Matthew chapter 16. Whew, thank you, Holy Ghost. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24 through 26. Watch what the Bible says. Listen to this. Matthew 16, verse 24 through 26. I'm reading now the English Standard Version. Then Jesus told his disciples. Notice he didn't say, I ask you. No, no, no. He said, he told his disciples, if, if, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. For whoever, listen, would save his life will lose it. But whoever, watch this, watch this, loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit? Here it is. Y'all ready? Y'all read this? You've, you've even quoted it. If a man gains the whole world, whole world, whole world, and forfeits his soul, or what shall a man give in return for his soul? There's four things here real quick. I promise you real quick. That we must do if we're going to be true disciples, true followers of God. And have spiritual surrender. Everybody say spiritual surrender. Yeah, spiritual surrender. Number one, he said, deny ourselves. Uh Uh-oh. 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 Deny ourselves. Everybody say that. Deny ourselves. To me, listen, this this is it. God gave me this sermon so I can preach it. This is the hardest one to do right here. This is the hardest one to do, to deny ourselves. Listen, here's what it means in the Greek. Y'all ready? Stop the flesh. Woo! Stop the flesh. Everybody say that. Stop the flesh. Come on, everybody say it. Everybody, not not, now. Everybody say, stop the flesh. How in the world do we stop the flesh? Here's, here's, here's what God spoke into me. It means this. You must have a fleshly funeral every day. A fleshly funeral every day, including me. Including me. Every day, watch, every day. Every day we need to wake up and say, flesh today, I serve you notice. Flesh today, you will not make me be mean. Flesh today, I will take a back seat. I will not try to be the driver of my life. Today, I'm going to examine my heart daily. You got to examine your heart daily. 
Watch, there's something else that we don't talk about. The Bible says, test the spirits daily. Test the spirits daily. And whether y'all believe me or not, right now, right now, you've got some kind of spirit in you. You sure do. Test the spirits. And watch this. Here's a hard one. Y'all ready? How in the world do you die? You die, deny yourself. You've got to think before you speak. Think before you speak. Think before you speak. I can't do it. Greater is he that is in me than he is in the world. I tell my flesh what to do. My flesh don't tell me what to do. Oh, Brian, I can't do it. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. Mm. Woo! Hallelujah. So when my flesh rises up, and y'all watch, can I just be, can I take out my heart this morning and set it before you? Every day my flesh rises up. And I know y'all don't think so, but every day, watch, every day my flesh tries to rise up. Every day my flesh tries to rise up. And here's what I try to do. Y'all with me? Somebody say amen. I, listen, right then, right there, right then, right there. I don't wait. I try not to wait. Because here's what I pray now every morning. God, today, if my flesh rises up, teach me. T let me know right then, right there, I need to stop it. And you know what's crazy? He will. He will. He will. When my flesh rises up, I try my best to stop it right then, right there. In other words, y'all ready? Can I be honest with you? I try to kill that thought. How many of y'all have ever... Are y'all ready? Y'all ready for rated R? Let's get, let's get off. Let's get away from the PG, PG-13 Bible studies, all right? Have any of y'all ever been sitting in church and have a bad thought? The rest of you liars. You lied! Everybody has been in church. Man, listen, I, no, I can't. I ain't gonna do that. Right then, right there, I try to kill that thought. When I, when I take it captive. No, you're not gonna, I'm not gonna think like that. Right then, right there, I try to kill that action. If my flesh rises up and I receive a text message, uh-oh, that I know that I can't read into it, that's why, listen to me, I'm gonna teach y'all something, listen to me. Quit sending text messages and expecting people to read your mind. Pick the phone up. <laughs> Pick the phone up and say, hey, listen, I didn't understand what you was talking about. Listen, I'm, I'm telling y'all, if you don't get this and you try to come back and be mean, I'm going to say, you need to be saved. You didn't hear the sermon. Listen to me. Right then, if that thought, take it captive. When you get that text message, right then, call them up. Hey, listen, I didn't really understand that. Can you explain that to me? Can you explain that to me? That motive. When somebody mistreats you, humanly, you're going to say, you do it one more time, and I'm going to choke you out. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to knock you. I'm going to make you even like it in the name of Jesus. I'm going to make you spell my name. B-R-I-A-N as I hit you. B-R-I-A-N. See, y'all, y'all, if we couldn't, here's what bothers me about church people. We have a hell week. And we're mean to everybody. And then all of a sudden, transform. So, oh, well, I know I can hear somebody now. Well, the Bible says, be ye transformed. Yeah, yeah, not one day a week. Every day. Every day. Y'all watch me. Hey, are y'all getting the word today? I'm all, listen. Every day, transform. Every day, God, that thought was not of you. God, that motive was not of you. Lord, I shouldn't have thought that. I take it captive. And I kill it. I kill my flesh today. I kill my flesh today. See, y'all think I'm up here. here. Here's what's going on in my mind right now. Right now. Brian, shut up. Brian, they're not listening. Brian, just stop. Brian, just quit. Brian, just give up. But can I be honest? It's a spiritual battle. It's a spiritual battle. It's about me surrendering right now. Whose voice is the, hallelujah. Whose voice is the loudest in your life? Come on, somebody. Who, whose 
voice is the loudest in your life. Because the one that is speaking the loudest will override. That's all right. Joy said, I act ignorant, but I get my point across. So I'm going to act ignorant. In a good way. <laughs> in a good way. Number two, take up your cross. Everybody say, listen to me. This is hard. You got to deny yourself. I want to surrender right now. Die. Y'all hear me? Die. Kill, kill the flesh. Kill the flesh. Everybody say, kill the flesh. Come on, everybody say, say, kill the flesh. I'm at Elkhorn Baptist Church. I'm not at First Baptist Frigidaire. Come on, everybody say, kill the flesh. Number two, you got to take up your, take up your, take up your, take up your cross. I want y'all to lean in and listen. Whether you believe me or not, everybody right now has a cross. Notice Jesus said, if you're going to come after me, if you're going to be my disciple, watch, I didn't write this. He said these words, you have to carry your cross. In other words, y'all ready? Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Watch this, you are a full-time job. <laughs> I miss y'all. Yeah, work out your own salvation. Salvation is personal. Salvation is personal. Some people to the point, and I, I get so tired of religious people because they think if you don't speak in tongues and if you don't do this, you're not spiritual. Watch this. My mama don't speak in tongues. My mama's one of the most spiritual ladies that I know. It's not, it's not about the gift. It's about the giver of the gift. Y'all understand? Come on. Because listen, I'm believing. Here's what I've been praying. Y'all ready? It's crazy. I need y'all to join me in this. From the front to the back, everybody is going to speak in tongues. From the front to the back, side to side, top to bottom, everybody's going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And you say, Brian, I, I don't, I don't want to do that. Watch this. You're at the wrong church. Because if the Holy Ghost, if the Holy Ghost is going to lead, we got to join in on His activity. Watch. In other words, we'll work it out. You can't keep looking to the right or looking to the left <laughs> and trying to work out somebody else's salvation. How many of y'all know about drove me crazy? When I first started ministry, man, you asked Dana. I'd make over 100 contacts a week. Yeah. And man, I'd, I'd go on all the visits and I'd write all the letters and I'd do this. And finally, I and then we'd have a problem and all of a sudden they'd be going, what, what, what's wrong? And I'd blame myself for it. But the Bible says, work out your own salvation. Yeah. yeah. And the Bible says, watch this. Take up your cross. Everybody say that. Take up your cross. If you're taking notes, I want you to put that down. Take up Bobby Gino's cross. Make it personal. I'm almost done. I feel some magic. Listen. Jesus said, when you lose your life is when you'll truly find your life. Oh, that's powerful. When you lose your life, it's when you'll truly find your life. <laughs> Here's what I found out. I told Holly at this this morning. Some of the best times, it's crazy, I don't even like saying this, that I have felt God has been in the valley. When nobody else was around me. When I had a Matthew chapter 6 and I went into my closet and I closed the door and I said, God, I'm hurt. God, I'm angry. God, I'm done. God, I want to tap out. And God's like, you finally surrendered, Brian. Golly. And I'm like, good. So I'm learning. Y'all watch. You know what it says in the Bible? Wives, submit to your husbands. That's a, that's a dirty word for a lot of people, but it's not. Because if your husband's a God chaser, you can surrender under his umbrella. And where the driver of the home takes you, you can trust. You can trust. So, and I found this that when I feel really out of control, that's when God is really in control. Let me give you another. Follow Christ. The third one is follow Christ. Everybody say follow Christ. I'm on. I got this one. One more. The church. <laughs> I wrote this down. Follow Christ. Everybody say follow Christ. One more time. We're living. We all watch. In some crazy crazy times pandemic racism 
Lord, Christians can't even get along. And we're trying to fix the White House. And I've said this and I'm going to say it again. The White House will not be fixed until the church house is fixed. Oh, come on, somebody. We're trying to fix Donald Trump and you're out of order. You're not denied. You're not taking up your cross. You're not following God. We got to make our minds up. I wrote this in my poem. Brian Raffrey, make your mind up today. And I'm doing it right now in front of you. I am making my mind up today that Jesus Christ is the answer for all things. He is the answer of hate. He is the answer of racism. He is the answer for abortion. He is the answer and He is the solution for all things. All things. And I wrote this down. You know what's missing in churches today? And y'all can say what you want. I'm smack dab in the middle of the KBC, the SBC, all the C's and the A's and the B's. Here's what, listen. Here's what churches need. We need signs and wonders and miracles and healing and tongues of fire. We need Holy Ghost, Spirit-filled church services again. We need them back in the church. And I served the devil notice this morning. And I need y'all to help me that we're going to plunder hell. That we're going to populate heaven. We will lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. We need Jesus back in the house. We need Jesus to be the driver. I'm not going to stop until somebody gets to their feet and gives God a big old praise in this house today. I'm not going to stop. Come on. Come on. No, no. If you believe what I'm preaching today, If you believe that the Holy Ghost needs to get back in the body of Christ, I want you to give God a big old hallelujah praise in this place. Come on. Come on, somebody. We need Jesus. We need Jesus. You say, Brian, here's the way I look at it. Y'all ready? Listen to me. I got one more point and I'm done. It's 11-11, make a wish. Y'all, Jimmy, you ever heard that? 11-11, make a wish. That's OCD really bad right there. Um, Thursday afternoon, I was sitting in St. Andrews United Methodist Church parking lot. I'm not gonna tell you why. Here's what the Lord wrote on my spirit. And if you're a note taker, I want you to write this down. Here's what the Lord spoke into my heart. You may not be able to feel God's shoes, but you can follow God's footsteps. I'm going to say that again because it's really deep. You may not be able to feel God's shoes, but you can follow God's footsteps. Take up your cross and what? Follow. Follow. Follow Jesus. Last one's this. Austin, thank you. You stay there though. Last one. When you think you've surrendered, here's a big one for me, Bobby Gino. Because <laughs> I've got said, God, I have surrendered all that I can. And God's like, no, you haven't. Have you ever done that, man? So here's the fourth point. You ready? When you think you've surrendered, surrender more. Y'all may not get that. When you think you've really surrendered, watch, you ready? Go deeper. When you think you've really surrendered, surrender more. Here's what it is. Surrender is not a one and done deal. Y'all got me? You just don't get saved and go, Whoa, I'm heaven bound with a hammer down. Whoa, I ain't going to hell now. And there's no more surrender in your life. And watch this. You can always tell, Sarah, who has surrendered or who is surrendering. They're humble. Just like a UFC fighter, Jimmy. I, th- I thought about this a lot. Thousands of people watching me. And it don't matter who's watching. He's like, I'm to a point I got a decision to make. Either I'm going to tap out and surrender or I'm going to get choked out and quit. God bless. That's a good word. There's a lot of people here today, right? If you'll be, listen, 
If you'll be honest, some of you, you're like, can I be honest? It's where I'm at. I'm not, listen, I'm not going to candy coat nothing. That's where your pastor is at. And thank God for a two-week vacation. Because God had to rejuvenate me. I had to get counsel. I want, you look, y'all, y'all like, what's going to happen? I'm good. How are you? Come on. How are y'all? I had to go to a counselor. Boy, you can tell when God up in the house. Because see, now I got y'all's attention. Where's B. Raphat? What's going on? I, look, look at me. Lean in. Same place, Travis. We all. Ooh, I'm, we all. Look at me. We all need to be. My granny said, Brian, you live in a glass house on a gravel road. Be careful. Don't spin tires. Wow. Wow. Granny's still preaching. So uh, let me give you this. Since I'm talking about my granny, matter of fact, we surrender. I wrote this down. Feel the Holy Ghost on this one. You surrender up to the last moment of your last breath. Y'all look at me. You're constantly surrendering. My granny... I talk about her a lot because granny had influence in my life. My granny died at the age of 86. God, I miss her. There's not a day goes by I don't think about my granny. My granny would do something in church that she would probably get a lot of looks today. My granny would, um, y'all have heard me say it. She would take a white handkerchief and she'd just start waving it. She would. And um, maybe a song would touch her. Maybe the, maybe the word of God. But I, I remember Granny, she would just be sitting there and she'd just reach into her purse and she'd pull it out. Not a, ra- a rabbit wasn't under it, but she'd pull it out. I thought she was crazy. I did. She embarrassed me. Matter of fact, when she grabbed the handkerchief, I would scoot down a little bit. I can't lie to y'all. Until I found out about the white handkerchief. Matter of fact, my granny, when we when we laid her to rest, she had a white. I asked Granny one day, I said, Granny, why do you reach into your purse and why do you grab a white handkerchief and why do you just wave it? And I'll never forget my Granny's response and God reminded of me of this Friday. <laughs> granny was a shouting lady. Granny would... uh <laughs> Before we would eat, I'm just being honest with y'all, it wouldn't be a two-minute prayer. Food would be cold. Thank God for microwaves. Toward Granny's life, she lost her voice. And I'm sorry I'm emotional. But uh, toward Granny's, the end of her life, she lost her voice. And I'll never forget what Granny told me why she waves the white flag. Matter of fact, the white flag in the Bible means surrender. It means I surrender. Granny said this, the enemy stole my voice, but he can't stop my praise. Sometimes 
you don't have to say a word. <laughs> Sometimes you just stand still in the valley of the shadow of death and you just raise your flag of surrender. And no matter where you're at, no matter what's going on, I'm just telling you, that taught me a lesson. He may steal my voice, <laughs> but he can't stop my praise. He may steal my voice, but he can't stop my praise. She said, the devil took my voice, but he can't take my praise. So the white handkerchief, I'm, I'm, the white handkerchief means surrender. Everybody say surrender. Come on, everybody say surrender. It means I'm yours, Lord. Your will be done in my life. I yield to you, Lord. And you are the driver of my life. That's surrender. So here's what we're going to do. This is going to be the invitation. Elkhorn Baptist Church has some white handkerchiefs up front. It's yours. I want everybody to get a white handkerchief today. Do you know there'll be a day in your life you'll look back and you'll see a handkerchief. Friday was my day. I went to the kitchen. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm trying. I pulled out my drawer and a handkerchief was there. And so today, everybody here today is going to get a white handkerchief. But listen to me, listen to me. It's not about you walking up to this altar and grabbing a hanky and going, Woo, and going back and sitting down and living like hell. Get up! Before you get a handkerchief, here's what you're going to do. Now I want Aaron to put this on the big screen. It's what Lord laid in my heart. And as I land this plane, as God lands this plane, I want you to say this word. And if you're a note taker, if not, get your phones out. I mean, here it is. Take a picture of this. What he's going to put up there. God, listen. I confess my need. Watch. To gain and keep control of things. Woo. And I ask for your help in letting go of, and you fill in the blank. Some of you are not worshiping God because you're so worried about your children. Watch me. Give them to God. And man, come up here and grab a handkerchief. And say, God, today I release them to your, in your hands. And God, I've got victory. And I'm sitting down in my seat. And God, I'm buckling myself in. And as for me and my house and me and my family, we're going to worship you all the days of our life. I'm not going to look to the left. I'm not going to look to the right. God, you put my head looking forward. And that's what I'm going to do. God, I confess my need to gain and keep control of things and I ask for your help in letting go of and you fill in the blank some of you are so concerned about getting in a relationship you forgot how to worship well if I can just get a husband I'm just telling you I've seen that, those kind of prayers come to pass and then your husband ends up not being a God chaser and he's at home he's not worshiping God I got to have a husband, though. Oh, you got him. Now go, 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 go. It's all yours. I mean it. It's all yours. Help me to leave it there with you. Amen. And when y'all can truly fill in that blank, God, I'm so stinking mad. God, I surrender my anger to you. Come on. Boy, this is where the rubber meets the road. Welcome to church. Welcome to church. God, I surrender all. Go deeper. Don't give God just 50% of your life. Anybody can do that. Anybody can do that. So here we are. We all need to have a spiritual surrender. Would y'all agree with that? How I many would y'all agree? Everybody, front to back, look at me. Everybody, everybody needs to spiritually surrender right now. 
Elkhorn, watch. If we're going to go forward, we got to surrender. I'm going to throw a handkerchief at y'all. So please, pray that prayer. Aaron, just leave it up there. And I want y'all to be honest. I want you to fill in the blank. And when you do, after you, after, after, everybody say after, you fill in that blank, I want you to come up here and we got a handkerchief for you. And this is going to be, watch, a reminder for the rest of your life, Dana. When that old devil tries to bring it back up. Oh, no. (laughs) Oh, no, 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 no. I surrender that. On the 12th day of July, 2020, I died to that. My flesh is not rising up no more. God, even though I'm in the valley, I'm going to praise you like I'm on the mountain. So it's up to you now. Oh, yeah, y'all can leave. That's the problem. People are leaving without the sacrifice. People are leaving without the surrender. Here's what y'all, hallelujah, God just spoke this to me. If everybody truly surrenders, we'll have revival. I'll throw another one. So here it is. Y'all ready? Fill in the blank. Fill in the blank. Fill in the blank. Fill in the blank. Mad, anger, lust, pornography, whatever. God, I surrender to you. I told a girl one time, we was on the Emmaus walk, and she was so wanting to get married and so wanting to get married. I went out to the Bible bookstore and bought her a little bitty fake ring. And uh, I said, here, put this on. She said, for what? I said, because until you marry Jesus, until you surrender to Jesus, you'll never find what he's wanting to give you. I'm just telling you that I cannot see, ear cannot hear, mind cannot comprehend what God is wanting to do for Elkhorn Baptist Church. Are y'all in it? Come on, are y'all in it? Come on, are you in it this morning? Let's surrender to God. Let's give it up and let's wave the white flag of surrender. Amen. Everybody stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Father God, in Jesus' name, God, as they fill in the blank, as they fill in the blank, I pray, God, Lord, they may need five blanks. I don't know. But Lord, I pray we'd be honest. And God, we'd fill in that blank, and Lord, we would surrender it over to you right now. And God, when we do, as a a spiritual step, we're going to take a white handkerchief. And God, we're going to wave it as a release.